My name is David Freeland. I'm an architect and faculty at SciArc. And we're today at Second House, which is a project designed by my partner, Brendan Buck and I, located in Culver City, California. began the project, we were particularly interested in complex spatial relationships. And this project presented us with a, a set of problems that really engaged that interest. We were looking at some of Peter Pierce's research in the complex geometry that you find in nature. We were looking at polyhedra and alternate kinds of ways that spaces fit together. So this was a set of research that was going on in the office. This project had the challenge of how to nest the second house on a site into a very tight area behind an existing home. Another important thing was the geometry as it related to the existing home on the site. And so the client had a prompt to think about the roof line of the existing home, which has a quirky A-frame kind of type to it. And so we were thinking about those, those roof lines and how we could extend some of the geometry while also creating a new home for them. We really looked at a lot of concept imagery, some references more architectural like Godfrey Bohm's St. Mary's Cathedral. This is something that maybe formally looked at how the roof line could begin to develop, but also combining that sort of very modern take on this kind of A-frame angular roof line with uh, more familiar references like country homes, farmhouse kind of types. That started the process and the, the conversation and we really were able to build on that to kind of iteratively go through many different spatial possibilities and how rooms may begin to relate together, how we could begin to knit interior and exterior spaces into a kind of aggregation of the two. It's a 1,500 square foot house with about 150 square foot courtyard. So it's very small. There's also a kind of garage nested in there as well. The project has a difficult sort of time orienting itself. It's behind an existing home, so it doesn't really have a front. It doesn't front on a major street, but there's also an alley behind it. So we ended up with not a front door and a back door, but two doors. The way that the house opens out to the landscape, how extroverted the house is versus how introverted it is, the way that it may open to a set of more immediate exterior spaces that can be accessed from the home is what we were thinking about. The client was interested in the kind of indoor-outdoor living, which is typical, I think, of a, a single-family home in Los Angeles. We looked at the opportunity of putting an interior courtyard, which was quite difficult to do because of the tight footprint. This presented a way to introduce an outdoor space into the house. So there is a kind of transparency at the lower level to the courtyard, while at, at the second level, we introduced windows that could look out to the adjacent environment, capturing views to the sky, buildings, hills in the background, as opposed to the immediate foreground. It's a modest house in size and in budget. So we were really looking to take advantage of conventional construction techniques, local expertise in labor. The house is designed based on a wood frame construction type and we worked closely with our structural engineer, Brad Smith, to come up with a way of uh, structuring the roof lines that didn't introduce too much complex technology or construction techniques. That said, the geometry does introduce a lot of difficult moments, but those were fun to work on. One of the best moments, I think, in the construction process was when we first kind of chalked out the foundation. They cleared the site. There was an existing accessory building here, a garage that was removed. And after that, and kind of clearing and demoing everything that was here, the contractor took our drawings and drew them out at full scale with white chalk on the site so you could see the foundation lines. And this is you know, prior to excavation, but it was a kind of drawing at full scale. And it was the first moment when we really understood the size of the house in relation to its neighbors, in relation to the existing house. It was a little bit of an aha moment, I think, for, for everyone. 
organizationally, the house matches each room with a separate volume, which then fit together into this tight-knit aggregation of interior and exterior. While those are separate and distinct, the material brings the whole house back together as a single form. So the kind of running bond of the cement board panels run from face to face, rolls around folds, and brings the whole house into the kind of the same materiality. There's more subtle inflections with material, mostly having to do with colors. The surfaces of the exterior of the building that are adjacent to setbacks are all gray, whereas cuts into that cube are outlined in white. So there's this color contrast between exterior rectilinear faces, which are gray, and then the diagonal cuts, which are white. This is also meant to engage somewhat in shadow play, such that when the light strikes a surface, there's a kind of ambiguity that's created between white versus gray of the cement board panels and, and shade and shadow that's created by the sun. On the interior, this is extended between different kinds of floor materials in particular. So the geometry of the separate volumes are traced out on the floor between tile and wood. This also alternates between interior and exterior, the objective being that there's not a clear certainty of when you're inside and when you're outside. The entry that comes from the main street is the most interesting moment. As you enter, you're confronted with the spatial ambiguity that's created by these volumes as they fit together. There's a planter which cuts into the house. It's a kind of simultaneously an outside and inside planter in that sense. And that's what you're confronted with when you first kind of open the door, is this splitting between interior and exterior space. Frequently, there's crossover in my office with the teaching that I'm doing at SciArc. In the case of the single family home, that, that's a really interesting problem to work on in the academic environment. And in a recent studio, I actually brought students out to see the house finished. But it was a great moment to see how they started to engage with the house. As first year students, they had never really been able to correlate drawings and an architectural project before. And we had the drawings here, so the students, they were walking through the spaces, they were looking at the drawings and understanding how the drawings began to describe the house. Culver City and Los Angeles in general is going through its transition to a more dense city. And so the, the promise of LA and the single family home, the yard, outdoor space, the sort of suburban ideal is really being jettisoned in favor and necessarily so of a more dense environment. And this project I think is caught up in that. It's an R2 lot, so this is the second house on the lot. It's not an accessory dwelling unit, an ADU, but it's similar. The problem of density begins to challenge architects to rethink and kind of manage the expectations that people have for homes in LA. So in particular, this had to do with, well, how do you incorporate exterior space? What sort of views are you able to actually capture? This idea of the yard, there is no yard in this house. The yard is, is the courtyard. It's quite small and compressed. And so the house really became a kind of exercise in thinking about what is an urban single family home and how do we then take some of the aspirations of Los Angeles, indoor, outdoor, views to the landscape, this promise of easy modern living and, and rethink those.